Good morning, and welcome to worship at Trinity Church. Um, if you're joining us online this morning, we're glad that you are here. Um, it is a communion Sunday, so you want to make sure that you have something to eat and drink as we come to the communion part so that you may join in with us. Um, a couple of announcements. This morning, we welcome Mary out as our pianist, um, pinch hitting for Jamie this morning, who is ill. And so Mary's last minute here, and we are very glad that you are able to be with us. Um, if you have offering envelopes, they may be found on the um, table in the narthex. And if you are able to join us for Christmas decoration takedown, um, that will happen on Tuesday morning around 10 o'clock. So please come join us and we'll have some coffee available and we'll have some fellowship and remove the Christmas decorations. Are there any announcements that any of you need to make? Then let us be at worship with a brief moment of silence to prepare our hearts for being together. I invite you to stand and join together in the responsive call to work. <laughs> In the very beginning, God separated the darkness and the light. God called the light day and the darkness God called night. We were once people who dwelled in darkness, but God has given us the true light, Jesus Christ. God has blessed us and adopted us, God's own beloved children, through the sacrament of baptism. The water of baptism brings to us healing and reconciliation. It is a symbol of nourishment and cleansing. This day is the day of the remembrance of Jesus' baptism. As we hear the words of his baptism, let us be reminded of our own adoption by God and celebrate the joyous connection to Almighty God. Let us join in worship by singing hymn number 68.
us join together in the confession of sin. We are incredibly stubborn, O Lord. We have entered the season in which your life has been given to the world. Your blessings have been poured out on the world. And yet all we can think about is our own problems, our own needs, our own desires. Help us to desire you, Lord. Help us to yearn for your presence. Pour your baptismal waters over us again, cleansing us from our self-pity and arrogance. Nourish and heal us so that we may joyfully serve you. Watch your head of jealousy, greed, and all negative thoughts and behaviors as a thing in the world. People, you have all this to do. see the blessings offered in creation, in the birth and baptism of Jesus, and in the ministry of the space of life. Yes, this is Jesus' name. The love of God is always offered to us freely, joyfully, for all eternity. Rejoice, dear friends. This is the good news of our Lord. Hear it and believe it. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are the forgiven people. Let us greet one another with words of peace. Peace be with each and every one of you. Also also with you. you. scriptures, prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, beginning at first one, verse 1. Here is my servant whom I'm up, I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not and lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew 3, beginning at verse 13. Listen for the word of God to you. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill our righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, uh, as we gather this morning, be with us. Help us to listen for your word to us. May it be spoken and received into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you remember your own baptism or have you heard stories about it? I doubt very many of you can remember your baptism, but because most of you were probably baptized as infants or as small children. But I can remember my own baptism because I was six years old when it happened. It was a hot July morning, and um, I was baptized with my baby brother. My parents had moved around quite a bit during the first years of their marriage, and finally they had bought a house and joined a church, and I guess they decided it was time for us to be baptized. So they took us to church, and as I can remember, it was an extremely hot July morning. And I remember standing in front of the church. It was a community Presbyterian church in Clarendon Hills, Illinois. I was baptized by the Reverend John David Burton, who actually happened to be the same pastor who actually married Rob and I a number of years later. <laughs> um, and he baptized both of my, my brother and I. We went back and sat in pews sat back down in the pew, and I was really sticky sitting there, and there was water running down my back. And I turned to my mother, and I guess I must have whispered in a very loud voice, Mommy, there's water running down my back. And all these people around me started giggling, and I was really embarrassed. Um, yeah, I remember my baptism. When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, it was by full immersion. And as he came up from the water, the heavens opened wide. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and it landed right on him. I wonder if this descending dove reminded him of the story of Noah from Genesis. You may remember it. After all that rain had stopped, Noah, who was probably also dripping wet like Jesus from being constantly surrounded by the waters of the flood, opened a window in the ark, and he first sent out a raven to see if the water had dried up, um, but the raven came back. And so he waited another week, seven more days, and then he sent out a dove. And the dove came back with an olive branch in its beak. When I think about the story of Noah, I wonder what it was like for him to have emerged from 40 days and 40 nights of torrential rain after a terrifying flood, a flood that was a culmination 
of so many other terrifying events. Um, even before the flood, the world had become ruined. Um, the scriptures say all of it. We have no stories, no details about what was happening, but Genesis points to a time when every thought, every one thought people, every thought people had was evil. Um, evil continually. The earth was corrupt, apparently was filled with so much violence. All people had corrupted all of their ways. Um, we're told in Genesis. Um, what God had made good had so thoroughly disintegrated somehow until it was the worst and the worst war, the most violent, the, the most violent terrorist cell, darker than the darkest dark you can think about. The whole world had become such a place of fear, a place of horror, murder, evil, wretchedness that God regretted having created the world. It was so bad that not only the, this horrible chaos and all the years of, how bad would it be that God destroyed the whole world and started all over again? It must have been so hopeless that it must have felt like the end of the world. Then this single dove goes out and returns with an olive branch. This green, beautiful, living olive branch comes back, a sign that there was new life, that it wasn't the end. After this horrible, chaotic flood, that there was new life out there, that there were growing things, that there was a safe, solid place where new life could completely start all over again. What a relief. What a relief they must have felt seeing that dove. The first evidence that God hadn't forgotten them, that God's promise of a fresh start would come true. When we talk about our baptism, well, when I talk about our baptism, I usually try to focus on the cheerful aspects, on um, how we're washed clean and made new, and how we're freed, like the Hebrew people were freed from slavery when God parted the Red Sea, and how God claims us and calls us beloved. And these are all th these true and important aspects of our baptism. But we don't often talk about the flood. You know, I think about it when my daughter was born and I decorated her nursery with all of these cute little Noah's Ark things. But you know, when you think about it, Noah's Ark and how God destroyed the world. It's really kind of horrible. God destroyed the world, but we have all these cute little animals around. Our story God destroyed the world. But then God started all over again. Um, but the flood, it was drowning in evil, drowning. And, and baptism is a symbol of that drowning and coming up from that, starting all over again. It's a symbol of new life. That evil, that the symbolism of evil that has run so rampant that we need God to destroy it. And we need God to help us start all over again. Just think about all the things that overwhelm people and crush us and leave us gasping for breath. Like things just like financial ruin or cancer cells spreading in somebody's body or assault or remorse over mistakes we've made or addiction or anger or grief or so many things that can flood our hearts or our minds or our lives just all those things that overwhelm a number of years ago Anne Lamott that wonderful 
author. She shared in one of her blog posts an experience her son Sam was going through, and it was called How I Managed. Oh, it was her son's blog post she shared. How I managed not to kill myself yesterday. This is what he wrote. He began by naming the pain of the holiday season, the onslaught of commercialism and happiness, genuine or not, a painful reminder of the things we don't feel. Sam said the objects we can't afford, the missing pieces we don't have, it's an exercise in endurance and grit. And Sam was glad to have survived it. And literally glad to survive, have survived it. Still he found himself exhausted. And he shared that a few days earlier, he called suicide prevention, the lifeline. It was a turn of events he found Embarrassing to admit, he said, as these thoughts are confusing and don't match up with the wonderful life I actually have, I felt guilty and ashamed. And he went on and he said, and I didn't have the strength to call anybody in my regular support network of friends and loved ones. He said he felt like he was drowning. But the spirit showed up like a dove and alighted on him. He didn't call it that. He says, I'm calling it that now. How the folks at the suicide prevention lifeline listened to Sam and helped him see that this wasn't the end. There was life out there, a reason to live, a place to start over again. And next week, as we remember Martin Luther King Jr., as we remember for him how fear could rise like a flood, in one of his sermons he talked about it, how after one particular tense week during which he'd been arrested and had received numerous threatening phone calls, he attended one of his bus protest meetings in Montgomery and he addressed the group. He tried desperately to project an image of strength and courage for everybody. When deep down, King said what he felt was fear and desperation and depression. When an elderly woman, a woman affectionately called Mother Pollard, a poor and uneducated, yet brilliant and wise woman approached King and said, something's wrong with you. You didn't talk strong tonight. King denied it. He wanted to keep his fears to himself. But she said, you can't fool me. I know something is wrong. Is it that we ain't doing things to please you? Or is it that the white folks is bothering you? And before Kim could answer, she looked directly into his eyes and uh, said, I don't told you we is with you all the way. Then the countenance beaming with quiet certainty, she concluded, but even if we ain't with you, God gonna take you care of you. Everything in me quivered, Kim said with the pulsing tremor of raw energy when she uttered these consoling words. And Mother Pollard's words came back to King time and time again, amid howling winds, winds of pain and jostling storms of adversity. Her words gave peace to King's troubles. God's gonna take care of you. When I think of the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, I think of those moments our hope is rekindled. I think of those moments our hope is rekindled, 
even when the flood waters are high and we have nowhere to go quite yet, the spirit comes to us in tremors, pulsing tremors of raw energy or moments of serenity or when something strikes us as funny and we know there's life out there. The spirit comes to us in well-timed offers of help or in a story that inspires us. And we remember that our world is still beautiful. The spirit comes to us in important moments in our lives as it did in Jesus' life. And we glimpse our reason for hope, which is ultimately God's faithfulness, God's love, and no flood can drown that with signs that love and those promises and life beyond what we can see. God's spirit comes like a dove at the end of a long, terrible flood. It's a sign that God will help us to start over and over and over again. Amen. Are there joys or concerns that you would like to lift up in prayer this morning? 
Martha, uh, those affected in Northern California with flooding and <coughs> mudslides and all those good. Works in Northern California for those affected by floods, mudslides, and etc. God in your mercy. Your prayers. A joy for George Walker, whose birthday is tomorrow. Tomorrow he will be 95. Prayers for George Walker's birthday. Happy birthday, George, if you're listening to my prayer. Bruce, let us pray. Almighty God, there is so much going on in our world. We can easily be thrown off balance. We pray for all those who are fleeing their homes because they have no other option. We pray for those who do not feel safe we pray for those who have spent yet another holiday season away from their families. We pray for those whose hearts are hardened by fear and anger. We pray for those people who are still getting sick from COVID and flu and other infirmity. Oh God, keep us centered, keep us healthy. God, help us to stay grounded in you. Lord, you are the creator and lover of justice. We pray for our governmental leaders. Please surround them with wise people. Help them to cut through bureaucracy. Help them to listen. Help them to think about future generations. Keep them from dwelling on personal interests and engaging in power struggles and to work for the good of the people and to bring help for those on the margins of society. Unifying God, we pray for our church. We pray for our sister churches who are navigating fracturing bodies. Oh God, we pray for the Roman Catholic Church as they grieve the loss of their Pope Emeritus and lay him to rest. We pray for our Orthodox brothers and sisters as they celebrate Christmas. God, we know that you care about our lives. And so with faith in your compassion, we pray for our church members. We pray for Howard Den Hartog, who is in hospital healing from fractured ribs. And for Libby and Lois and Carol and Ken and Betty and Joan. And Bernice and Mildred and George, and all those we name in our hearts. Oh God, this season of Epiphany reminds us how you are constantly revealing yourself to us. The realization of Christ never ends. With that in mind, we give you thanks silently or aloud for the ways we have experienced you just today. Christ, you are alive, you are present, you are working in the world. Keep us close to you, O oh God, we pray. Keep us close to one another. Watch over us. Watch over those we love. Watch over those we need to learn to love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we have been blessed generously, let us return our thanks to God by giving the gifts of our tithes and offerings. <laughs>
that holds us all together and the beloved community you call us to form. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and east and west to gather and take a seat at this table. There are no barriers at this table. All who profess their love and their trust and their faith in Jesus Christ are welcome to partake of this meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift Let them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, God of majesty and splendor. By your power, you created all that is, making a universe out of chaos and ruling over all things in love. Throughout the ages, you called your people to love and serve you and to be your light among the nations. When we failed you, you did not fail us and sent prophets to call us back to your ways. We praise you that in the fullness of time, you revealed your love by sending your son, Jesus, to be the light of the world. He came to heal our brokenness and to set before us the ways of justice and peace. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 he lived for you, spoke your truth, showed your love, and gave himself for others. In his death on the cross, he overcame death. Rising from the tomb, he raised us to eternal life and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we wait the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Gracious God, Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place, as this bread is Christ's body for us, Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Illumine our hearts, O oh God, with the radiance of Christ's presence, that our lives may show forth his love in this weary world. Teach us to befriend the lost, to serve the poor, to reconcile our enemies, and to love our neighbors. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints 
and the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Gracious God, we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, our Father, our Father who art in heaven, our kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he gathered together with his disciples in an upper room. And he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Every time you eat this bread, do this and remember me. Then he took a cup and he filled it with wine. And he said to them, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Every time you drink from this cup, do this and remember me. These are the gifts of God given to and for the people of God. I invite you to join together in this feast.
the cup of the new covenant. Let us pray together the litany on the back of the page. For the healing you have given us in the brokenness of bread and the pouring out of the cup. We thank you, O oh God. For the community that you have restored in us through the sharing of life. We praise you, O oh God. For the courage and strength that you have promised to us, even when we feel lost and unsure. We commend you, O oh God. Make of us all this day nourishment for these stark times, food for those around us who are hungry for justice and hope, that being bread for them, we may also be fed and full. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 507. <laughs> shine in your hearts and in our world brightly and may you remember your baptisms and be glad go in peace to love and to serve our lord jesus christ amen, amen.